Hello hockey fans and welcome back to another video. In less than two months time, the 2022 Winter Olympics are set to begin, and thanks to a clause in the NHL's current collective bargaining agreement, many of the league's best players shall be travelling to Beijing, China, and representing their respective countries at the men's hockey competition. While most hockey fans would love to see NHL players return to the Olympics and watch the best of the best go head to head on one of the sport's biggest stages, sending NHL superstars to the event may not be the best idea after all. With several NHL teams having already postponed games due to numerous COVID cases, and with the sizable consequences that each player faces should they travel to China and test positive for the virus, there are serious concerns that letting NHL stars travel to Beijing could not only be detrimental to their own health and safety, it could also have a long-term effect on the player, their organisation, and the league as a whole for the rest of the 21-22 NHL season. Given that these discussions have been building over the last few weeks, and given that opinions are starting to shift amongst league executives and the players themselves, I figured that it would be worth delving deeper into the situation in order to understand where things stand right now and what might happen over the coming months. So in today's video, let's ask the question, should NHL players go to the Olympics? Now I want to preface this discussion by saying that I'm not going to go into the political side of the upcoming Olympics or its very controversial hosts. While many countries are threatening to boycott the games due to China's less than ideal reputation on the world stage, and while the country has committed a plethora of human rights violations over the years, I want to specifically focus on the logistics surrounding the NHL's participation and whether or not the health and safety of the players could be in jeopardy if they decide to attend. Let us begin by looking at how NHL players secured the opportunity to play at the Olympics and why recent events may force either the league or the Players Association to cancel their participation at the event. As part of the NHL's return to play program following the pandemic shortened 2019-20 season, on July 10th, 2020, the NHL and the NHLPA agreed to a four-year extension of their collective bargaining agreement. As part of this agreement, the league allowed its players to participate in both the 2022 and 2026 Winter Olympic Games, since the players were willing to give up sizable concessions elsewhere in the agreement in order to secure this opportunity. 14 months after the league and its players had come to an agreement, on September 7th, 2021, the NHL and the NHLPA reached an agreement with the International Ice Hockey Federation and the International Olympic Committee to allow NHL players to participate in the 2022 Winter Olympics. That said, the agreement carried an opt-out clause should COVID conditions worsen or if the 21-22 NHL season is disrupted by cancellations so much that they need to use the Olympic break in order to make up games instead. The IIHF and IOC also agreed to fit the bill for travel and insurance costs for all the NHL players, but they refused to cover additional COVID-related insurance, meaning each player would have to find the relevant insurance and fit the bill themselves in order to attend the event. So if all the parties involved had come to an agreement and everything has been put in place for them to participate, why might NHL players not be going to the Olympics? Well, the first few months of the 21-22 NHL season seemed to run relatively smoothly given the circumstances, as teams played through their respective regular season schedules, while players bounced on and off of the COVID protocol list every single day. However, the first sign of trouble arose on November 15th, 2021, when the Ottawa Senators revealed that 11 different players and an assistant coach had all been placed on the league's COVID protocol list. Since they had just lost over half of their roster and a member of their coaching staff, in an attempt to limit the spread of the virus both to the rest of their own team and their upcoming opponents, the NHL announced that Ottawa's next three regular season games had all been postponed. In fact, the entire team was shut down and practices were cancelled for the next five days, before the Senators finally returned to practice on November 20th after nine players were taken off the COVID protocol list. Less than two weeks after the Senators' incident on November 27th, the NHL announced that the New York Islanders would also have their next two games postponed after an eighth player was placed on the protocol list. 
the team had already played several games with a depleted AHL heavy lineup due to players being out of the lineup either due to injuries or being placed on the protocol list, but the league decided that an 8th player being added to the list was the final straw and something had to be done to try and control the situation. Similarly to the Senators, the entire Islanders roster would be shut down and practices were cancelled, but they would also return to the ice just five days later and continue on with their season after several players were removed from the protocol list. This pair of stoppages, coupled with the rising number of players on the protocol list across the league, prompted the NHL to make some minor changes to their protocols for the upcoming holiday season. On November 20th, 2021, league insider Frank Saravalli revealed that the NHL was on high alert with positive COVID cases rising around the league and that a memo had been sent to all 32 NHL teams the day prior. This memo told teams that all holiday parties had been cancelled and that players shall refrain from attending public engagements or events in an attempt to further limit positive cases and contain the spread of the virus throughout the league leading up to the new year. Given that the league has already postponed five regular season games this year, has seen a pair of major outbreaks amongst two different teams, and given that the number of positive COVID cases around the league keeps rising, you can see why there is serious talk surrounding whether sending NHL athletes to the Olympics is actually a good idea, both for the players themselves and for the league as a whole. After all, the NHL have previously stated that they may be forced to cancel their participation at the event and deny their players the opportunity to play in China if teams keep seeing a large number of their players enter COVID protocol and they have to keep postponing games because of it, since the three-week break incorporated into the 21-22 season schedule would give teams ample time to catch up. Not only that, the players themselves are becoming increasingly concerned about flying to Beijing and playing in the event, since according to ESPN's Emily Kaplan, one player claimed, quote, if you test positive in China, you're stuck there for three weeks. That's brutal. Guys are terrified of that. However, one event that seems to have members of the league on edge at the moment, and arguably the biggest point of concern in the lead-up to the Olympics, seems to be the 2022 NHL All-Star Game. Set to take place in Las Vegas on February 5th, 2022, the NHL All-Star Game is expected to feature many players who will go on to represent their respective national teams at the Olympics. Since most of these participants will probably be lock-ins for the Olympics, the league's plan is to fly all of these players directly from Vegas to Beijing straight after the event to ensure that there is minimal contact with anyone who hasn't been recently tested by the league and to limit the possibility of any positive cases once they arrive in China. In order to ensure that none of these players contract COVID before they leave, NHL insider Pierre Lebrun claims that the Players Association has been pushing for tighter protocols for players during the event to avoid the possibility of any outbreaks, while ESPN's Emily Kaplan claims that the NHLPA has asked the league to take over some of the planning surrounding the players at the event including moving the hotel the players are staying at from the Wynn Encore to a hotel on the Vegas Strip that doesn't have a casino. Yeah, because that's gonna go down well with the players, isn't it? What's the point in holding the event in Las Vegas if the players can't even enjoy the casinos? Given that NHL Olympians could potentially face an outbreak once they get to China because of their shared time in Vegas, it kinda makes you wonder whether hosting the All-Star Game just a few days before the Olympics is actually the best idea, let alone why they are even running the event in the first place. After all, the NHL last hosted an All-Star Game in the same year as the Olympics, all the way back in 2002. There have been three different Olympic Games since then featuring NHL players, so maybe there is a method to the madness, COVID or not. If the league wanted to host an all-star game and keep the NHL Olympians as safe as possible before they go, one solution could be to only select all-stars who haven't been chosen to represent their national teams at the Olympics. However, this would mean that many of the league's best players wouldn't be attending the event as they are all going off to China shortly after, so it would be less of an all-star game and more of a runners-up game. And besides, would most hockey fans tune into the all-star game if the likes of McDavid, Crosby and Ovechkin were replaced with the best of the rest? I don't think so, do you?
While I understand the league's desire to have an all-star game this season since last year's event was cancelled, and while the weekend is a big moneymaker for both the league and the players association, who share a 50-50 split from hockey-related revenue, taking time out of the league's already compressed schedule and running the event so close to the start of the Olympics, when so many of the same athletes will likely be attending both events, doesn't really sound like the best idea to me, especially given the possibility of the virus quickly spreading through the players and the potential implications that could come with it once they get to China. Sure, the All-Star Game will likely get solid ratings and do very well for the league's new US TV partners in ESPN, but the 21-22 season schedule is already compact enough thanks to the lengthy Olympic break. Is keeping the All-Star break such a good idea too? After all, the playoffs, the entry draft, and free agency have all been pushed back a few weeks later than normal just to fit in the Olympic break. Why push them back even further just to have an all-star game? The NHL season is long enough as it is, folks. Despite the various concerns surrounding NHL players going to the Olympics, the league still seems set on letting their players go to China at this moment in time. According to ESPN's Emily Kaplan, NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman never wanted NHL players to go to the Olympics. But since it was agreed upon in the collective bargaining agreement, and since he made a promise to them that they would get to go, he intends to see that promise through. That said, not everyone around the league is happy with this decision. According to TSN insider Gord Miller, many NHL executives, who were pretty lukewarm to the Olympics to begin with, are now getting rather hostile, with one claiming, quote, ticket sales are coming back slowly, who knows what's happening with the pandemic, as well as, so why are we shutting down and going to China? Sounds to me like another clash between players wanting to represent their country on the highest stage and businesses wanting to protect their highest earning assets. Though NHL players are still expected to participate at the Olympics, several national teams have begun to make contingency plans if this decision changes in the next few months. During an interview with CBC Sports on November 22nd, Team Canada general manager Doug Armstrong said that while his team have been building a roster filled with NHL superstars, Hockey Canada have also begun to construct a second team, including players outside of the league, should the NHL decide to change their mind on the event. Not only that, there are also rumours suggesting that several national teams have begun sending out feelers to Olympic eligible players regarding their thoughts on the situation in order to determine whether they should select them for their respective teams. If you ask me, both of these actions seem pretty understandable given the circumstances. So where does this leave us? Well, at the time of this recording, the NHL still intends for its athletes to compete at the Winter Olympics, with the league having until January 10th to opt out of their agreement with the IIHF and IOC. The NHL could still opt out of the deal after the deadline should there be any serious developments closer to the competition date, but the league would face financial penalties as a result, something that we all know they would rather avoid. ESPN's Emily Kaplan also suggests that if NHL players are pulled out of Olympic participation, she could see the league shortening its international break from three weeks to one week and rescheduling some of their fixtures to take place during this added time, likely including the already postponed games for the Ottawa Senators and the New York Islanders. That said, these schedule changes are all dependent on arena availability, which varies in feasibility depending on which team and which arena is in question. It's worth mentioning though that the NHL hasn't started down this road just yet, and they likely won't unless they do decide to stop their players from going to the Olympics. Though the NHL will always prioritise the success of their business over the desires of their players, and though you could certainly understand why they would want to protect their highest value assets as much as possible, if you ask me, I think that the final decision on whether or not to go to the Olympics should be given to the players themselves. Sure, the last thing the NHL wants is for their superstar talent to travel to China, get COVID, and be stuck on the other side of the world in quarantine for weeks after the tournament is over, but since the players had to make notable concessions in other areas of the collective bargaining agreement in order to secure their participation at the event, 
the league should do everything in its power to honour the promise they made and give the players the opportunity to make the decision for themselves. After all, as much as the league wants their players to stick around in North America and keep making money for them, the players association, or even each individual player, has earned the right to decide if their desire to represent their country and compete for a gold medal at the Olympics is worth heading to the origin of the current global pandemic, risking the possibility of getting COVID, and potentially being stuck in Beijing well after the NHL season has resumed. To be honest, each side makes a completely justifiable argument from their perspective, so if the players are the ones ultimately at risk, they should get to make the decision, at least in my opinion anyway. While hockey fans would love to see NHL players return to the Olympics and showcase their world-class talents on the international stage, I think many of those fans, including myself, would completely understand if the players themselves decided that it was simply too risky to go. Sure, it would be a real shame to miss out on watching the best of the best go head to head to prove who the real champions of the hockey world are, but the health and safety of the players should always be the number one priority. And if they themselves deem that it's too risky to participate given the current situation both across the league and throughout the world, then so be it. And who knows, perhaps this decision would force a repeat of the 2018 Olympics in South Korea and give other notable players from across the hockey world the chance to compete at the Olympics instead. It would certainly help China's chances at the competition, that's for sure. Whether NHL players end up going to the Olympics or not, one thing's for sure. Until the players land in Beijing and the puck is finally dropped on the competition, or an official statement is released cancelling their participation, there's going to be plenty of speculation surrounding this subject over the next few months. And that was a look at whether NHL players should go to the Olympics. What do you guys think about this situation? Do you think NHL players should go and represent their countries at the event, or do you think that it's too risky given the circumstances? Let me know in the comments below, I would love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching guys, I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye! A big thank you to Drew Fawcett, Houston NG, and Worthless Pieces for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.